Hello, hi there. Can everybody hear me? Yes, I, I can hear you very well. Hello. All right. Hello. Okay, hello, hello, Helson. Okay, so uh, we're getting started. So, hello, everyone. Welcome to join Maosai and Sanskrit co webinar for today. So, this is Renfi from Maosai, and uh, we're very happy to have Hassan from Sanskrit today for bringing Sanskrit's platform and the solution. Uh, please say hello to everybody. Hello, everyone. Okay, so for today's sharing, we will be doing the co-webinar together. So in the first part, I will be the presenter for talking about Mouse's products, as well as to tell about some of the cases we cooperated with Sanskrit, the team. And then Sanskrit and Hassan will be bringing their platform and solution for helping us to understand how to do the interaction between Mouse's products as well as Sanskrit platform together. So this will be the full sessions for today. And also we'll be having the live q and session. So if you do have any questions, please put your question in the chat box or Q&A box. After this webinar, we will be sharing you the follow-up email while grabbing the materials for today as well as the recording for today to let you know and to give you some unfixed questions feedback. Okay, so uh, don't worry. So we will be having the time to talk further. And if you have any questions, please put it in the chat or Q&A box. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, I guess you might be familiar with Mousesite. So Mousesite, uh, we are a digital sensing products provider. So currently we are having different series of products like we have for smart buildings, smart cities. And uh, one of our main focuses is for smart buildings. We wanted to bring not only a good environment in buildings, but also we wanted to bring energy efficiency for buildings. And uh, let's meet our new friend, Sanskrit. So Sanskrit is uh, also a good company majoring doing the high efficiency and data-driven powerhouse with all of those smart building solutions. So together we are focusing on buildings around the world for bringing a more energy saving as well as to bringing more flexible solutions for our customers. So together we cooperate with each other. We wanted to bring you a complete IoT solution while bringing you the energy saving and more help for and the flexible solutions together. So our feeling is we wanted to make sense matter and to make physical world map better. So we want to make sense as the first part, we sense using, for example, the sensors and also our gateways and to use some different technologies to do the understanding. While we have all of those data, what we need is to interact those things together while we can combine different sensing technologies and sensing devices together. So later, we will let you know how do we put all of those things together while bringing you not only just products, but also how to do the interaction with all of those sensors and products. Okay, so first of all, I wanted to bring the smart green building solutions and uh, well, like the smart building, we are going to talk about those different technologies we're using as well as the series of products. Let's see. So first of all, we find there might be some issues happening in the conventional buildings. So traditionally, they might facing different problems like lack of energy efficiency, limited occupant comfort, limited flexibility, or sometimes limited data collection and analysis, and as well lack of automation. Why we need those and why we define those as the pain points? The reason why we do that is because those lack of things might be bringing some limited issues. 
For example, you might find it's hard to track the energy usage in your building. You don't know which part of the appliance might be cost the most, and you do not know how to make the future decisions. As well, you do not know the occupancy of, for example, the meeting rooms in your buildings. You might find it's very hard for those employees to find their way and find a place to work or something like that. That might be cost extra time and to decrease the overall productivity of them. So there might be some issues. That's the reason why we wanted to do the transformation while we wanted to bring those IoT solutions in. So here are some of the statistics I wanted to uh, briefly sharing with you. So for example, there might, uh, we find there are over like 115 million buildings will deploy smart technologies by 2026. Uh, by our, this is the focus of the Jupiter research and we find that there might be residential and non-residential buildings. So there are still some opportunities and they are facing the uh, change of those conventional buildings into a smart IoT buildings. As well, we find the global market is also having a good increment in this part. So in this part of the time, I think this is the good time to have the IoT and to have all of the solution built in. It cannot only be bringing with the, all of those savings, it's also a tendency of the world's future. So that's why we wanted to think about smart buildings are welcoming a promising future. All right, so as we talked about some of the background of bringing a good and smart buildings, we wanted to think about every aspect to energize the buildings. So which part of the building should we do the transformation and should we do the IoT solution? For example, main focus sometimes is in the indoor environment. This is one of the very important part. This is because we wanted to find out is that a good environment to bring in a healthier and more comfortable environment for people who are in the buildings. Such as so in this way, we should have to detect some of the environmental parameters including temperature, humidity, and air quality. Also, we wanted to use this as one of the resource for letting us to automatically adjust the HVAC system. You don't want it to the AC is always on. You wanted to have it and make it under your schedules. You wanted to make everything under this kind of different schedules for bringing some economic uh, things and also to make a more comfortable environment. So this is also a good way to minimize the energy consumption. So the uh, one of the most important part you wanted to supervise in your building might be the energy consumption. So for the conventional uh, like devices, you might only have to do that by yourself. You have to turn off the lights, you have to turn off the AC only by hand. And sometimes if you forgot about it, that might cause the most um, and cause a lot of unnecessary consumptions. So in this way, if we are switching them to the IoT and the smart solutions, it might be able first to supervise the appliances. So you will know the electricity consumption every minute. That will be sending to your platform to show you exactly and make it visualized. Secondly, you can use those data as one of the resource and reference for you to further manage and redistribute some of the energy consumption in your building environment. So that might help you to manage your HVAC system and this does not require you to go there and to do those switching. You can use some specific schedules if then conditions, you can also use the wireless remote control to do all of those settings. Besides those two parts, space and resource are also one of the most talking part and very important part. The occupancy issues, I will say, this is very important while comparing and connecting with your indoor environment and energy efficiency. 
The reason is while you have to manage how many people are in this building, you might be able to switch and to adjust the indoor air qualities level, like to re. Uh, readjust your thermostats, the different temperature, while they will be having you the different data analysis. And also you can track the usage and you can have them, for example, in a small restroom in your building. You might know how many times there are people using that bathroom. So you will send your cleaning stuff there by schedules, by the using frequencies, instead of sending them there all the time. So that will be saving also the labor force as well. So the others, like you might want to do ask is, oh, what if, what if we have already have some existing conventional devices in the building? So what can we do to make it smarter instead of to switching all of them into the uh, smart devices because that costs the most? So we do offer the smart IoT transformation. You can do the easy transformation for example, you can use a smart light control to control up to eight channels and eight circuits of your lights and IoT controllers, which got serial ports through motor bus. And so you will be able to directly connect with some of your appliances while you can do and transfer it into a so-called lower one device. So that will be the thing we wanted to do the transformation instead of doing all of those replacements. So these are mainly about those every aspects to energize buildings. So now let's see some of the real products we are offering as well as the real cases we had with since green. Okay, let's see. So first of all, let me introduce the full topology of to transfer your building and to how to bring the IoT solution. First of all, in the building, there are some of the sensors we will deploy in there. So those of different sensors have different functions. Those sensors are doing their jobs to doing the controlling jobs, or some of them are doing the uh, remote detection jobs to collect the data and then to send into the lower one gateways. So with mouse size lower one gateways, you will be able to collect those data. And also we allows for the protocol transformation. So mouse size lower one gateway UG56 and UG65, which are best fit for buildings, can be able to support the backnet protocol transformation. That means you can be able to do the direction directly connection and transformation of data in between lower one protocol and the backnet protocol. That will be helpful while you wanted to do it and use it as the transformation part. And also uh, while you collect your data and also we offer the internal network server for doing the data analysis, after that, you can have your data collected and you can reuse and redistribute those data in using in your sense green platform. So that will be able to help you to get some dashboards and visualize data collections. So later, Hassan will be talking about that in details and to show you some demo to let you know how to interact those um, outside census data into the sense green platform. So you will see that later, okay? So let's see something related to the products. So firstly, I wanted to bring the related products major in doing the HVAC control and the management. First of all, you are, uh, this is one of the very classic product series line in mouse side, AM series. AM series means ambient monitoring series. That is basically for IAQ monitoring. And WT is for the thermostats. So that part is mainly for doing the controlling of the environment, the temperature, helping you to adjust the overall environment in your building. So let's see some of those details. So for AM series of products, as you can see, we are offering two uh, different product lines here, AM100 and AM300 series. 
As you can see, the AM100 series are basically some fundamental series of products having the specific parameters detection function like temperature, humidity, and carbon dioxide. And for the AM300 series, it's got more and more professional uh, detecting parameters like the TVOC, barometric pressure, PIR, light, and so on. So those will be fitting for different requirements. That just depends on if you're using the AM series for doing the fundamental detection or you want it more, be more professional. And also a good news, uh, if you're uh, in your area, you're requiring and looking forward to make your building to work with well, and we are having our AM319 currently in able to work with well. So it can help you and benefit you in applying the well buildings. So if you are interested in knowing more about these details, we can talk about that further later. And the, the thermostat series, so actually we are offering different types of the thermostats. And this is one of the most important uh, products we are having for last year. We just have it last year. And this part, actually, first of all, this is the one which we works with the air conditioners, heat pumps, boilers, and PDAC devices for the building. And also in different buildings, they're requiring different systems. So if you're looking for some specific thermostats for fan coil unit system, we still have our WT30X for fitting that requirement. So those two products are all for helping with managing the indoor like airs and indoor thermostats for the temperature management. And they are both for the different like systems we are offering. So if you're looking for something else, you can let me know to see if that's in our plan because we are currently having uh, some of the new products under our development. So we will be bringing some of the new products later. And for all of those new uh, thermostats, the very important difference between this and the traditional thermostats is this allows for integrating into your system. That means it can be doing some interactive and some connection with other like appliances. For example, while you combine it with your like IAQ system, you can be able to understand first to get the temperature and also you can understand if the occupancy of the indoor places. While you know it is the occupancy things in there, you can find out how to adjust your thermostat. It will be automatically switching to the best mode. So we call the, for example, the economic mode or the comfortable mode. So that will be very helpful for buildings, for hotels, for retailing. While it can be switching its mode with understanding the environment. So that will be helpful. Also, you will be able to schedule and to set some schedules for your winter season or for your summer season to switching the temperature and to help you to build a more connective and also comfortable indoor environment. So feel free to let me know if you have any questions, okay? So together, while using mouse size HVAC and and the energy consumptive solution, you will be able to achieve the following things. For example, the remote monitoring and control energy efficiency optimization, plans for ongoing maintenance, comfort and with regulations, and data gathering and analysis to better return on your investment in that. Okay, so this will be helpful for improving the overall quality of your HVAC system. The second part I wanted to bring in is for really something related to light control and the management. So in the building, the most uh, important and the one, two of the most consumptive things, one is for the HVAC system, Another one will be the lighting. So it's required to have some smart solutions and smart 
uh, interaction with your lighting system. For in this part, we are having the co-work series covering this part of the requirements, as well as the occupancy and people counting. So uh, like I mentioned, the occupancy things is very important to adjust the lighting as well as HVAC system. So I will be bringing our very professional occupancy and people counting and to introduce how do they interact with these different devices together. Let's see. Firstly, let's see this uh, picture. So first of all, we'll find there are challenges in lighting control system. We find that in the past, there might be uh, something you should have to go there and to check and to turn it on or off. And sometimes it requires some extra efforts. But in now you can be able to show and to see every single things by connecting them with the IoT lighting controller. So that will be able to connect with and not only just with your uh, switches, you can connect it with your switches of different rooms lighting system while you can still be able to manage them remotely online on your platform. And in the future, we also think it's very important to connect and combine this solution with occupancy uh, detection sensors. Like, for example, we have this is one of the occupancy sensors we have while it detects there's the occupancy status in the room or in the meeting rooms or some places, it can be adjusted and to send a command to the uh, another IoT devices and to let it to do the different jobs. So you can manage and to redistribute and to do your own if then conditions to let them work. So that will be the full kind of solutions in doing the transformation and you will be requiring for building a more energy saving buildings. And you see serious IoT controllers I mentioned in the beginning. And that is one of the things we are trying to bring like more potentials for the transformation of the traditional devices. Like, for example, you have already had some of the uh, devices, uh, appliances, you do not want it to switch them all into IoT devices. You can use a UC IoT controllers to do the transformation of the traditional appliances. While the traditional, the UC series of products can be able to support LoRaWAN, you can have the LoRaWAN version, also you have the cellular version for option. So they will all be works while you wanted to do the transformation of the ex existing devices because it's got multiple serial ports for supporting you to do the direct connection. So that will be supporting the Modibus protocol transformation. So that will be the thing while you use UC series of IoT controller in transforming traditional devices through Modibus protocol into, for example, a door one protocol. So that will be helpful for some existing uh, transformation of appliances. So another two important products I wanted to bring in is one of our popular products, the smart current transformer, as well as those smart sockets and the, some wall sockets and the portable sockets. So why I wanted to talk about this is we find the energy consumption are requiring some specific monitoring system. The smart current transformer, actually, you just have to click that on your circuits and you will know how many currents are transforming through the circuit. But as for the usage of this kind of product, it's mostly used for testifying, for example. It can be used for doing the kind of testing and also to get to know how many current and the general power consumption there. If you wanted to cooperate with something like this for the security reasons as well. 
Okay, and uh, also for the smart sockets, the the first of all, it's a socket, just like the sockets you're using. The only difference is it can be able to collect the electricity and the power consumption uh, data while you just put it, and also to do the remote detection. So that will be the thing related to the smart sockets and also for the smart current transformer. Let's see some details. Like I mentioned, we are currently offering the current transformer and with different uh, rated current. We are offering uh, like the smart CT10X as well as CT30X. That will be work with different currents for different usage. Mainly for 10X is for the building usage, and 30X is sometimes for a more larger consumed uh, like appliances, like in some industrial works and sometimes like that. So this kind of products, like I mentioned, it's got a non-intrusive work. You can just directly hand it on the circuits. You do not have to bother your existing circuits. And also it can just be powered directly by the circuits and also to help you to collect the general power consumption. But this cannot be able to uh, be uh, integrated and to support you to do the charging system. This is only a power consumption rate for your like reference for testifying security reasons something like that this is very important and the very popular products in buildings especially for those constructional sites because you can reuse it for many times and every times to checking if the circuit can work so this would be the things like that and all of those two products are currently available just want to let you know and the smart sockets, like I mentioned, uh, the difference is it can be firstly to check the electricity consumption. And secondly, it can be doing with the remote, time-based and local body control. And also they support a protocol which is called Myocyte D2D. That means that we have our proprietary D2D protocol to let myocyte devices to talk directly with another device. So that would be faster while comparing with doing with lower one gateways usage, but it can support lower one gateway command at the same time. So that would be helpful while you wanted to use for example, to use mouse as devices to connect directly with another. So that will be very helpful for, and it's very easy to do the settings and even conditions. Okay, like I mentioned, there are something I wanted to highlight. First, the mouse ID to D communication. Here are some examples I wanted to talk a little bit. For example, we have the mouse ID to D controller and we have the mouse ID to D agent. Controllers of the mouse ID to D is for doing the sending command to let somebody to do something. And the agents are receiving the command and do something. For example, the WS156, the smart panel, it's got six buttons. We can have different settings for each of the buttons and to let them control the other things. For example, they can control the lighting system, by controlling the WS50X. For example, you can control the curtain by controlling the UC100. UC controller, which has already directly transferred the curtain into a lower one device, it's by the connection directly. So this is the kind of topology for helping you to understand D2D. Uh, secondly, the BACnet protocol, you will see this can also be able to work with mile-size gateways to doing the transformation while to transfer and to build your uh, LoRaWAN devices into your existing BACnet system. So this can be supported and also to help you to do the transformation of the existing BMS system. Okay, 
So here lets us to see some of the real cases we work with our partner sense screen. And after showing those cases, we'll have our sense screen, our partner to let you know more details in integrating all of those data and try to interact all of those devices and platform together. So this is the IAQ monitoring case for AT plus residential buildings. In Dubai, you can see it's got the IAQ devices while using the AM308, uh, which has been able to detect different parts and up to eight parameters. And it can be able to put in 10 spots in each building for common areas. While by collecting all of those data, it can be transmitting to the Lorawan Gateway UG56. After that, it will be collecting by the platform. You can show, you can get the reports, you can know the energy efficiency, and you can optimize the energy consumption there. And you can check the overall like different to parameters level and tendency and changes in the platform. Overall, it can be bringing a better service quality to in increase overall the operation of your HVAC system while to give you automated reports and to send you alarms, notifications to securing everyone's health and comfortable in this building. So this will be a very uh, classic uh, like kind of a uh, solution we have for IAQ monitoring in buildings. Secondly, this is another one we have with Sense Green, our partner. So this is a smart water leak detection uh, case. So it actually, Maosai, we are offering very familiar smart water leakage detection sensors. We have different shapes of them and for different areas. For example, you can look at this picture. This is the one this case has been choosing. This is for zone leak detection. You can see the yellow ropes here, and in the rope, it can be detect if there will be water leakage happens. And you can just put it into the company and specific place you want it to check. For example, the FM company, they wanted to use it to put it in some critical areas, such as the pump rooms and the server rooms in, in, in the advance and to check if there will be some water leakage happens and to send the alarm and while to securing all of those uh, devices. So in that part, they are using the zone leak detection sensor in and five sensors per building and trying to connect it with the UG56 as well. And after that, they have been able to share those data and to send the alarm by the platform. So the platform will be giving you the full report and every single like alarms while it's been having some abnormalities happens. So with this IoT cases, they will be doing the damage prevention and to send you alarms and notifications while to securing the safety of that area. Okay, so these are basically the cases, just some of a few of cases we have with our partners. And uh, before, uh, just like I mentioned in the beginning, we wanted to interact all of those data and the devices into real cases and use in the applications. So now, please welcome our partner for Sense Green, Hassan, to give us the introduction of the platform and tell us how to interact all of those sensors and data into Sense Green's platform. Okay. Thanks a lot, Jane, for your excellent presentation. Uh, now, uh, I will share my screen and I will show you a couple of slides. But after that, right after that, I will, I will. Uh, uh, offer you a live demo of our uh, platform. Uh, so our, our our platform is focusing on uh, smart buildings, which means like we we support uh, excellent devices of my side, like from air quality to energy monitoring to control. Uh, so covering end to end requirement for a commercial building uh, to become uh, smart buildings. Uh, so our software can cover various uh, applications from automation to alarms. To device management, which I will showcase you in a minute. 
Uh, so most of the most most important feature that uh, we focus on is the automation part. Uh, I will I will also demo you quickly, but uh, users most of the time they could have different devices and different different devices they want to control in different conditions. So based on that, uh, let's say you have an occupancy sensor and you want to control the light accordingly, uh, so that you can you can you can uh, create condition based control. Uh, with the platform. So you can turn on and off, you can create time-based control, and also you can you can uh, create action-based, device-based uh, control. I will show you a real, real application right now. We can also offer 3D floor plan, so we can digitize the building. We can offer a 3D floor plan of the building. We can, uh, sometimes uh, you have a large scale building, maybe tens of thousands of square meters. So it's hard to imagine on a list view, for the sensors, whether, whether you have a good temperature, bad temperature. So with, with visualizations like this, you can see immediately, hey, in this in this spot, um, I have a red zone. So let me check the temperature in more detail here. And in this area, maybe you have a CO2 issue. So it turns uh, yellow so that you will take a closer look at there. And also we will be able to offer heat maps and comparisons of, of different buildings, different, different sensors so that you will be able to see uh, what, what, what's happening uh, during the week, during the month. Uh, one of the, one of the uh, cool things we offer is uh, how we utilize uh, machine learning and AI. Um, so we, util we utilize uh, all the data collected to offer monthly, week re weekly reports for the buildings where users can create reports. And uh, sometimes they submit these reports to the management. Sometimes they, they share these reports with the users for transparency, um, so they, they can analyze all the parameters throughout the building, throughout the week and, and month. And also we offer a flexible alarm mechanism. The users can create alarms based on certain conditions. I will show you in a minute. And they can, they can receive alarms uh, from WhatsApp, from email, from SMS, or from push notification via a mobile application. And they can also quickly create um, uh, standard-based application. What I mean by that is, let's say you are managing your building based on WHO or based on uh, Dubai Green Building Standard. So you want to create an alarm with a few clicks that if my building, if my room doesn't comply with Dubai Green Building Standards, you want to receive an alarm. So you can also do that with a few clicks. On top of that, uh, we also offer device management from our dashboard. Uh, what, what I mean by that is also, so you might have different devices. Well, most of them could be battery powered. So you can see their battery percentages. You can add new device. You can delete a device. Maybe you move the one device to another location. So you can also edit that uh, via device management. So I will now showcase you a quick dashboard demo. Uh, because again, some of those features could be easier to understand when you see a, a real use case. Uh, as I said, this platform is no, oh, sorry. Let me let me share my screen again. Okay, so uh, as as I said, this platform is focusing on um, commercial buildings. That's why once you log in, once you create your account and add your, add your sensors, um, add your sensors, you see like how your building is overall doing. Uh, for instance, you can see how many sensors you have, how many gateways you have. Maybe you have some not operating sensors, you have a not operating gateway, so you can, you can see the overview here. And also, of course, quickly, you can see how your building's temperature doing, how your building's temperature doing compared to the uh, outdoor temperature real time. And uh, you can see some analytics here for the average of the building. So you might have uh, 50 locations where you collect data so you can see your average uh, sensor data compared to outdoor data also. And you can have a certain analytics. Maybe you want to see the humidity for the past week. You want to see the CO2 data past week, or you might to see you might, you might want to see your energy consumption uh, for, for the past week. So let me show you quickly how you can add device here. Uh, so you can easily add device with a few clicks. So you can select a uh, sunscreen LoRaWAN, you can select a uh, sensor, uh, you can select here mile site as device device brand. And we, we already pre-configured all the mile site devices here. 
Um, so all you have to do is change, you, 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 you have to choose the model. So maybe you want to add a portable socket. Uh, app key is already uh, decoded here. You will select the frequency. Let's select the uh, European frequency. And all you have to do is just to add uh, device EY. And after that, uh, you select uh, which building you want to add this one. And then uh, you, you add the room name. Let's say I, I added this to uh, meeting room uh, heating, maybe meeting room uh, heater. Yeah, I, I can do that. So once I click submit, this, this sensor will be live on the dashboard and you will be able to collect data and manage this uh, sensor through your platform. <clears throat> uh, let's let's have a have a look at uh, one device example. So this is a, a light controller. Uh, so as you can uh, see on the camera, so this device you can you can easily install to manage your lights. So this device uh, right now managing a meeting room light. Uh, so you can see the uh, real time data for this device and also the event logs. So when it's uh, when it's uh, turned off, when it's switch off, when it's switch on. And you can also manually control here. You can switch on and off. Uh, you can see the uh, consumption data, like how much energy your lights are, are consuming here. And also you can create a timetable. So maybe you want to focus on, maybe this room has a certain schedule. Okay, you can add an hour, maybe for every Wednesday, uh, this light switch must be turned on, uh, let's say at 5 a.m. And let me add one more. And I, I will switch this off at, uh, let's say, uh, 10 p.m. on Wednesday. So once I add that, you can see it's automatically mapping on the timetable. So once once I save this, uh, this device for every Wednesday, this device will start at 5 a.m. and it, it will switch off at 10 p.m. every Wednesday. And I can configure this and add this scenario for uh, for the other days as well. And if I want to uh, get one step further, maybe I want to uh, create, as I said, condition-based uh, scenarios. So maybe I have a I have a PIR sensor here. So maybe I want to control my lights uh, based on uh, occupancy uh, on top of timetable. So I might have timetable, but maybe I want to uh, add one more layer as control with with occupancy sensor. So what I can what I can do is I can select occupancy sensor here. And I can select occupancy parameter here. I can say if this occupancy sensor is showing empty, which means that's not occupied for ten minutes. Uh, okay, what will what I will do is I will uh, select meeting room light here, and I can select action and I can select off. So I can select this every day, every weekday, and once I save this, it will be also activating uh, occupancy based control. I can do this do the same for for heaters uh, power socket. So uh, you can see one scenario here. If the meeting room temperature is less than 20 and meeting room temp occupancy is occupied, uh, make the heating heaters power socket uh, on. So which means I can have this type of power socket and uh, I can map this with occupancy sensor so that if that room is occupied and temperature is less than certain parameter, I can I can uh, start that uh, heater. So what, where we use it in in mostly these type of actions, for instance, we map this with uh, air quality sensors and people they want to control their air purifiers, humidifiers. Um, so if if humidity is under certain level, they start humidifier. Or if uh, if PM level is above certain level, they start their uh, Air purifier. So these type of these type of uh, actions can can be taken also with with uh, smart sockets. One of the one of the key features also I want to emphasize is the alert. So users they can select. Uh, let's let's give you an example of of uh, water leak as we mentioned already the uh, use case. So uh, users can select okay water leak sensor and they can select the leakage and they can select uh, true. So, which means uh, I want to I want to get an alarm when uh, there's a water leak, uh, and I want to get this instantly. So I don't want to get this when this is leaked for ten minutes because this is a critical uh, alarm. So I want to get instantly, and I, I can also select here my uh, alarm type. 
So I can select multiple times, multiple types. So I can select here email and WhatsApp. Since I already configured my email and phone number when I create my account. So once this happens, I will receive an email with water leak alarm and I will receive a WhatsApp message with, uh, with uh, telling uh, water leak status. So sometimes also the, the problem is sometimes uh, buildings, building managers, they have a lot of users. So they might have admin users, they might have uh, technicians, right? So uh, with this with this uh, feature, they can also they can also select. So who will who will receive the alarm? So maybe as a management, uh, you want to only see high level operations. You want to see the reports, but you want your technicians to receive a WhatsApp message when there's a water leak, so that they can they can take a look at the pump room, what's happening there. No. So this is also creating that flexibility. So you will you will multiple user types can receive multiple uh, alarm types also. Uh, also, finally, let me let let us quickly take a look at the reports. Uh, so users can select a uh, starting and ending date for the building analysis, and uh, they can select weekly, monthly, quarterly, and then report is being generated on the portal. Uh, so you can. You can take a look at this report. So how your building is managed. Uh, you can also copy this link and share with anyone uh, without any account access. They can they can also access this report. So uh, as you can see for this report, which is uh, from first of May to for until until the first uh, of July, uh, we analyzed uh, more than one and a half million data points uh, for this report. So this is providing an insight. Uh, with with only one look, without without uh, losing yourselves in the grass, uh, how did you do in temperature? How did you do in humidity and all these parameters? And as you can see, humidity is two stars, which means that's it's problematic. So maybe you want to take a closer look at the humidity. So I can click at the humidity and come to the humidity page. Uh, so here, I can see immediately my working hours average for humidity is thirty six point six percent, which is actually lower. Uh, than what uh, WHO recommends. It, it is usually uh, 60 to 40 percent. So which means uh, I'm having some issues. So here I can also see uh, which which are my highest and lowest uh, humidity levels. So I can see, hey, this room is uh, okay in terms of humidity, but I'm having an I'm having a problem with developers table, which is uh, lower. So maybe I might consider to add a humidifier there to, to improve comfort of the, of the occupants. Also, it's providing certain certain action, certain insights. So when, when was your maximum humidity? When was your minimum humidity uh, for that week or for that month? And how did your building do uh, between working hours and non-working hours? Uh, with, with these insights, uh, a lot of users, uh, they, they detected um, the the air leaks with with the buildings, especially in humid humid regions such as, uh, let's say Dubai. Uh, so the humidity levels were uh, high in some buildings compared to other buildings. So they they found out some sometimes uh, sometimes emergency doors were leaving on, or sometimes they they detected certain windows were uh, leaving open, so that they detected those and they managed to reduce. Uh, humidity levels by the time, which is also having a lot of benefits, such as reducing mold risk and and improving uh, occupant comfort. So you can you can have the same insights uh, for for all other parameters as well. Uh, so let me let me stop here, and uh, maybe we can we can have some time also for the Q and A. Uh, so if you have any questions about the platform, uh, feel free to ask me, and if you have any. Uh, questions about the devices that we showcase, uh, we are also happy to answer them. And I think it's a pretty good sharing with all of the platform and use. Uh, I can't believe it's your first time to do the webinar. Did you, right? And I guess we can't have the specific time. I think we still have 10 more minutes. So please share with your questions in a Q&A and or chat box. And if you wanted to uh, get to know further and talk about further in details, you can also contact us. 
So I will be showing the contact information with both mouse site and set screen right here. So if you're looking for having some further talk with us, so you can just connect with us. And also we can also be putting our email address into the Q&A box and letter. We will be sharing with the follow-up emails with all of the materials for today and also the contact information. Okay, so we'll be waiting here for another 10 minutes. Do you have any questions that we can be sharing?